Esther Nelson, although she, I think in many ways, had a sad life and died tragically early, rather like, I think, a sort of Bronte sister, the, the, the um, daughter of a vicar up a bride, a large family, and many of them succumbing to illness at an early age. Um, and she had a deep melancholy. Um, you might think she had a fairly quiet sort of life, but I don't know whether she did or not, but in her imagination, she went all over the world and imagined all kinds of dramatic scenes. She used Manx stories and legends, and I'm now going to read you a section um, from a poem known as the legend, uh, A Legend of the Isle. If you want to read the whole thing, um, I suggest you get onto uh, the Manx um, literature website and you can read quite a, quite a lot of it. So I have edited it here um, for reasons that might be, become obvious. I read ye beware of the Carras do men as ye come up the wold. Oh, I read ye beware of the Carras of the Curragh Glen, for he that will dare it comes not again. In whispers his fate is told. In Yerby Glen the peat lies deep. In Yerby Glen dark secrets sleep. In Yerby Glen the pools are black. But dead men's spirits will come back and shrieking point to far beneath where the dark men hurled them to their death. The Carras do men were a fearful race, a band of borderers none might trace, whose land or lineage no one knew in the wild lone isle wherein they grew. But in the empire of old MacLear, none could invite with them compare. In Yerby Curragh they dwelt alone by dark peat bogs where the willows moan. Down in a gloomy and lonely glen those gloomy savage and unknown men passed long, <coughs> long ages in vice and sin and the dark pit swallowed <coughs> the victims in. There lay a lone hut by a lone wayside, a publican's hovel but woe be tied, the wretch who thirst or weariness led into the dark and pestiferous shed. For to drink there once was to drink no more. And there came no tales from the dark trap door. It was vain to murmur or vain to seek. The assassin steel, none saw to wreak, none saw of murder one fearful trace. No screams were heard in that lonely place. The potion was potent, the trap door sure, and the deep peat bogs were a shrine secure. Who has not heard of the peddler boy? Who has not heard of the child's decoy into that murky murder pit with his lightsome heart and his hardened pack. Alas, he never returned from it. And here the shadows at midnight flit. He is lying down deep in the pool, so black the potion through every vein worked well. There was none to warn him or none to tell. So down he went in that hour of gloom into a horrid, unwrecked of tomb. If the Carastu women were comely to see, with their wild dark eyes and unbraided hair and the cork and pinnings, oh, what would they be with the golden brooch and the ribbons fair? Or can they for the peddler child with his guineas bright and his little pack? His mother blessed him and fondly smiled. She blessed him, but oh, he never came back. There is a bright and a fatal star that shines o'er the feathery Ulamar. And when that cold star hath height and power, grim death is abroad and fate hath her hour. That star presides over the dark twigger glen. It hath brought success to the Carras do men. Its image upon that black pool is gleaming, and then there is sleep that hath. No dreaming. I read ye beware of the Carras do men, as ye come up the wold. Beware of the Twigger Yeager Glen, fly away, fly away from the loathsome den, be ye ever so brave and bold. 
For the Ullamore bogs have a hideous slime, and the Ullamore bogs were the hue of crime. And though the lemons may speak, ye fair, who have not heard of that young Adair. Beware, oh beware of the haunted den, and beware of the twigger yigger glen. Oh, I read ye beware of that cold night star that shines o'er the fatal Olimar. Thank <laughs> you.